Hey guys, it's Sid here with SVTPerformance.com and I'm in a 2022 Ford Maverick first edition, two liter EcoBoost with all wheel drive. And we have a full features inspection and on road review coming up. As you can see, we're going to go through a little bit of sand right now on this little road that we're out on. Well, we've got a full road test. We have towing, features inspection, Got to spend a little bit of time with this thing. We want to give you guys our thoughts, opinions, feelings, all that on Ford's latest small pickup truck. All right, guys, I wanted to kick off the review of Ford's latest small truck, their 2022 Maverick test truck here, which is a little walk around features inspection, give you a look at it. Like I said, it's a 2022. It is a Lariat all wheel drive, first edition and uh, has the Area 51 paint color on it. And honestly, I think this is the best looking Maverick that I have seen. I think this paint color, these wheels, the blacked out wheels on it, this is by far the best looking one of these little trucks that I've seen. Uh, if, you're probably going, if you're going to get one, this combination is very, very nice. Looks really good. Even the uh, hood applique, I think looks pretty good. As you can see, it says, first edition about a million times in it but step away a few feet and you can't see that i do like the blacked out roof that looks really nice along with the blacked out mirrors this one has the equipment group 500a the uh, full floor liners which we'll show you those in a minute those things are really nice the lariat luxury package the first edition package and ford co-pilot 360 msrp thirty five thousand eight hundred dollars which is not bad, especially if you consider uh, the competition for this, which is going to be, you know, your compact trucks, which don't exist anymore, really, and midsize trucks. Because interior room, it's a, probably a little bit better than a Ranger. Right there with, you know, Colorado, Frontier, Tacoma, all that kind of stuff. And to get a tr one of those trucks equipped like this one, you're going to be in the 40 grand range, so... 35 for this one not too bad then again those are all full frame trucks this is a unibody we'll hop underneath uh, a little bit later in the video and show you what's going on underneath but right now let's just uh take a look inside first thing let me apologize if there's any wind noise or glare or anything this is the first halfway decent day of weather we've had that i can film this thing in and unfortunately we have direct sunlight it just is what it is and it's windy so there may be some wind noise sorry about all that but it's either this or nothing so i've showed you guys one of these before that uh, five star tuning had on their dyno working on their tune i'll uh, put a link to that video if you want a little bit more in depth so i'm just going to go really quickly through this one it has a substantially similar interior and after living with this truck for a week i have to say i do like the way that ford has done this uh, it's a very utilitarian interior in that uh, it's mostly just uh, hard plastic, but in something like this, it's made for an active lifestyle, you know, going out doing sports, um, some light duty off-roading, and I do mean light duty, uh, along with just general everyday small truck jobs. You want something that's very easy to maintain and take care of, and all this stuff will be super easy to just wipe down, keep clean. I mean, I've been using this thing for a week and there's the most dirt I have in it. I just did a quick wipe down a second ago with just a cloth and looks good. So very easy to maintain. I do like that. I do, something else I do like that Ford, like worked into their philosophy on this truck is all these materials instead of just trying to mimic a natural material because like i said this is all just various forms of uh, injection molded plastic things like that instead of trying to mimic like leather they said let's just come up with unique designs so that gives this little like trapezoidal shapes built into all of this it's sort of unique looking instead of trying to mimic something just create something completely unique and I think that looks really good like the texture on this door that's not just trying to be you know leather grain or something like that and it goes along with even all these little trim pieces like through here I like that I appreciate that just embrace what it is and be unique instead of just trying to make something look you know like it's not speaking of 
you know more modern and heavier duty materials the seats in this thing are all vinyl no leather i think they look pretty good and to be honest with you these things are holding up a whole lot better than the leather seats in the bronco we had last week the truck has about six thousand miles on it just like the bronco did that we had in and these seats are they look brand new that being said they're not super comfortable uh they're way too flat on the bottom for my taste but the surfaces are holding up very nicely i also like this center console cut out right here makes it nice for your leg to lean over you're not just leaning against a hard piece of plastic a hard console or something like that kind of a unique feature on this ford and i do like that all this stuff is very heavy duty i like that and i like that you get rubber liners that you can take out and easily clean that's pretty cool of course you got charging points things like that things we've come to expect i also like uh I noticed this on the Bronco as well. Ford has made these little AC vents. Uh, they are feel much more substantial than the old stuff. I don't know really how to describe it. it. Just feels like this is better made. Like it's a heavier, stronger plastic. Doesn't feel like it'll break like some of the, you know, if you guys remember like Gen 2 Lightning vents, those things are, they just get fragile feeling. This thing feels beefy. Pretty nice. Onto the back. I was, like I said, I've shown this before in that other video, but we do have some charging points back here. AC plug-in, big deal, keep things charged. Got a little console in the back for your back passengers with cup holders. That's nice. And something I really like, check out all the storage underneath this back seat. Tons and tons of room back there. That's really nice to see. In the bed, we've got some topsoil because somebody decided to drive through my yard the other night. It was the power company clearing out some limbs from an ice storm. So I get the fixed ruts, and that's great. And that's what we got in here. 10 bags of topsoil is probably 300 pounds or so. And I figure that's what most people would use this little truck for, is little runs like that. And you can see it's quite capable, not squatted to the ground. We do have a two inch hitch on it. This does not have the max tow package, and we'll talk more about that later on in the video. Show, give you guys a little bit of towing footage and how I feel it tows. But that's pretty much it, the quick walk around. I can pop the hood and show you what's going on under there. Like I said, we covered that in a previous video, but let's just take a quick look anyways. So here we are under hood, and like I said, I have a much more in-depth video just describing all the goings on under here on that video with uh, Five Stars Truck. But this is basically what you get. One thing I didn't realize, these do not come with a little beauty cover, sound deadening cover on the engine. I guess that's a cost cutting measure, and uh, you know, that's how they're keeping the price down to like 20 grand starting price, I guess. So. Uh, you, what you see is what you get. You don't get the nice beauty cover over the top. They do have a little bit of sound deadening over top of the DI pump. Uh, honestly, I doubt that makes much difference because this thing does sound like a little diesel on a uh, cold start, which I like. Uh, I like that about the EcoBoost that they have that little diesel -y tick to them. Some people may not, but I like a truck to actually sound like a truck and, you know, this sort of does, so that's kind of nice. But that's basically it. Like I said, I've got another video. If you guys want to see that, we go much more in detail on that. So let's get it out on the road and go for a drive. So we've got to spend a little bit of time with this Maverick over the last week or so. Not in the greatest weather. Had a couple winter storms and whatnot. But uh, on road, it drives a lot like a car, which is to be expected because it's unibody. And uh, that's kind of how it's based. It's based on the Ford Escape platform that's also shared with the Bronco Sport. If you've driven one of those, it drives very familiar. It's uh, a very competent handling little truck. Um, it doesn't really have a super truck-like ride or anything. It rides just like a small SUV. Uh, engine noise-wise, you do get a little bit of noise from the uh, two-liter EcoBoost sounds just like it would in any of those SUVs or maybe a Focus ST you know that you guys are probably used to it's just a competent little truck it's sure-footed um, 
handles very nicely has what i would call adequate power uh, from the two liter i'm sure the hybrid version is probably down on power from this i haven't driven one i'd really like to because that's the one that i would be super interested in the base model it gets even better mileage uh, of course you know it's front wheel drive only this one being all wheel drive you can do a little bit of light off-roading nothing super serious but we'll take a look at that a little bit later uh, I've got a little road we like to go uh, test things out on but this uh, on-road capability is nice if you just need a small truck to run around town take your bikes to the trail things like that there's no reason you shouldn't shop this thing um, if you need a little bit more capability then you're probably going to be in the market for a Ranger which is about the same size but you get a lot more capability but a Ranger is quite a bit more expensive when equipped equally to this little truck i've been pleasantly surprised by the mileage we've been getting out of this thing um, even though it is not the hybrid version right now it's showing 26 miles to the gallon and that's with me off-roading in it towing with it and everything it's uh we've got so far 327 miles on this tank of fuel it says 66 to empty and that is showing a quarter of a tank of fuel. This thing has like a 16 gallon fuel tank. Uh, before we started towing uh, my little utility trailer with a uh, golf cart on it, more on that later in the video, uh, it was getting an average of 32 miles per gallon, which is decent for something that has, you know, the capability of hauling f four adults. You know, I wouldn't want to sit in the back for a long trip, but the run around town go to your favorite watering hole or something that's perfectly acceptable in the back there's plenty of leg room for uh adult sized humans back there i wouldn't want to go on a 10 hour trip in it uh in the back seat but hey uh there's bigger vehicles for that go buy an f-150 or a super duty if you want to do that kind of stuff but uh yeah we were getting 32 miles to the gallon uh that was with mixed driving so you can't really complain about that and i would imagine the hybrid version would be even better wind noise uh is pretty good there's not much wind noise and this thing has some of the best windshield wipers i've seen in any vehicle i've had this thing in a sleet storm the other day and uh, windshield wipers work perfectly and they're silent I mean, it's just quiet windshield wipers uh, the paint on this one is very nice uh, very flat no orange peel but then again, this one's one of those pre-production models that the Ford likes to give us a test. And I think they pay a little bit extra attention to the kind of stuff they give to the press uh, than, say, your normal just run down the line car. I have a feeling that this one's probably been cut and buffed or um, it's had a little bit of paint correction because the paint is really good. It's Area 51 paint and it just looks great. But who knows, uh, the paint uh, on our Focus, our Fiesta ST that we've had uh, for the last, oh my God, seven years. It's hard to believe that vehicle's seven years old, but it's 2015 model. Uh, it's really good too. And I believe they're made in the same factory in Mexico as this. So maybe they uh, just have a little bit better paint booth at the factory that makes these little trucks. This one's really nicely equipped, has my favorite layout for uh, HVAC controls uh, which I'm not using right now but I am using my heated seats because at uh, this point in my life it's almost a therapeutic for my back more so than it is to keep me warm uh, power wise she moves along okay eight speed automatic two liter EcoBoost let's uh let's pop it up here we're doing 45 so, so it'd be kind of like an acceleration test here and I mean, that's not bad right there we just picked it up to 65 70 pretty quickly so not bad at all like I said five star tuning uh probably by the time you guys see this we'll have a tune available uh we've covered that in a previous video I forget exactly how much power it brings it up to, but it adds quite a bit of uh, horsepower and torque to this. You know, these little EcoBoost engines, if you just lean on them a bit with some uh, more boost, some 93 octane fuel, they do pretty good. Eight speed auto uh, in normal driving mode, it wants to get into high gear and stay there and it's fine and gets you pretty decent mileage doing that i mean we're doing 47 miles an hour and it's like 1100 rpms 
but I know this thing is made for an active lifestyle. That's kind of how Ford is marketing it. Younger people that want to take their bicycles and go to the little banjo parties and things like that. So it should be able to handle a little bit of light duty off-roading. So this is one of my favorite roads to head down for that kind of stuff. It's just a, a graded dirt road heading out to a rock quarry. Nothing spectacularly difficult. But as you can see, we're rolling along 33 miles an hour and it's a, a, little, a little jarring, but not bad. It definitely does not have an off-road suspension on it. I believe uh, you can get these things with an FX4 package, but I doubt that that would make it all that much more compliant. But the good thing is you're not going to hurt this thing doing light off-roading like that. With the all-wheel drive system, um, it does have, you know, I'd say probably six, seven inches of ground clearance. I don't know what the exact spec is off the top of my head. Later on in the video, we'll show you guys underneath this thing, uh, all the underpinning and everything but uh, should be able to handle this kind of stuff. I wouldn't want to get it into super loose sand or anything like that uh, and bury it up because there is no, there are no front tow hooks on it. It does have a hitch in the rear so you could snatch it from the back if you had to, but it's not really intended for that. It's more intended for stuff like this to go down a trail, get you to the campsite, things like that. And for that, it's perfectly competent. You could easily take it out for a weekend camping something like that or like i'm doing i've got about three three or four hundred pounds of topsoil in the back of this thing right now it's handling that no problem uh that actually didn't change the ride as much as i thought it was going to you know usually you put a load in the uh bed on a truck and it smooths it out but it's pretty much the same as it was before so it handles that well but yeah this on road is pretty good it can handle a little bit of towing and we'll cover that a little bit later on in the video but for now uh let's get this thing up on the rack and take a look at it pardon this brief intermission but i wanted to give ford credit for an option they've added on a lot of their new vehicles and that's these molded weather tech style uh, floor liners these things are really nice way better than the old just rubber floor mats that were an option or available through Ford Accessories. These things are way, way better. They only charge 135 bucks um, additional for the option price on the new vehicle. Has them in the back as well. But they're really, really nice. Especially this passenger side one. Going to contain all kinds of dirt. The driver side one, unfortunately, has a cut out there for the accelerator pedal. Um, so that sort of negates it to me because you see all the crud that's getting on the carpet there. But I see why they do that for safety reasons. They don't want the accelerator pedal getting stuck under a floor mat. But these things are super, super nice. And I would definitely order these in any vehicle I was getting from Ford. And if they have them for something you already have, I would pick them up if you don't already have an aftermarket set because these are pretty sweet. It even says Maverick right on it, so nice stuff. Another innovative feature that Ford's added to the Maverick is this little slot here on the back of the console and actually there's a few here under the seat as well and what those are are basically little holders for some accessories that ford is planning on offering uh i'll try to find some pictures of a few of them rolling in here but things like a little trash bin cup holders stuff like that basically allow you to accessorize the interior and sort of build out this area and a few other spots in the vehicle uh, however you see fit so that's kind of neat so something else that ford has designed into this 2022 maverick that i really like is all the utility that they've added to the bed so you normally you just get a set of these tie downs here on the bottom but they've actually put another set on top and you talk about tie downs you also have them on this rack and you have some d-ring style ones at the front of the bed that's really cool you have the light in the bed as well as a 400 watt capable ac outlet so that's super handy and of course always the uh, tough bed spray and bed liner if you're ordering a ford truck this always get this option from the factory this stuff is really really nice you also have some dc power points here on either side for dc accessories you can add as well as a little storage container here so a lot of uh, nice features in this bed. I especially like just all those additional tie downs to, 
tie down a few things. I had some propane tanks in here the other day, strapped them in with no problem. And as always, definitely, definitely get this spray in bed liner. Uh, it's way better to get it from the factory than have to uh, go aftermarket because this stuff is really nice and uh, it's just going to keep the bed looking much better for much, much longer. Guys, we made the trip up to Fort Mill, South Carolina, to Pro Dino. You guys that have been on the site know them, that we've been using them for years for tuning, install work, all the various things that we high performance people need. We got our Maverick First Edition. Paul let us throw it up on the rack so we can show you what's going on underneath. Give you guys a little tour of Ford's newest small truck. First thing is, I don't know what the point of this little sawtooth bracket is other than maybe to pop this temp spare if you got hit in the back. Seems weird. But this thing does have a two inch receiver. It is bolted in through here. See, it's a separate steel weldment then bolted in with these four bolts on each side into the unibody. So for you guys that don't know, this is a unibody truck. There is no traditional ladder frame. You can see all the way up into the bedside here. Yeah, don't need dirt falling down in my face. But uh, you can definitely tell that uh, Ford was uh, economic minded when they put this thing together. But you're getting a lot of value for your money as far as content and everything goes. This lower control arm here looks like it is a stamped aluminum piece. Coil spring rear uh, suspension, like you'd expect. Electric uh, parking brakes. Again, just like a lot of new Fords going to that system. This whole rear suspension is on a cradle that just bolts into the unibody here. A small rear diff and then the world's longest drive shaft. So another thing that's really sort of unique, got a tiny muffler here and a gigantic muffler here. And we got cat number one and cat number two tucked up in there. Here you can sort of see the uh, back side of the engine, transmission, all that good stuff. The drive shaft, of course, is going in to the front uh, wheel drive bias transmission. You can uh, sort of make out up there, further up there, that is the heat shield for the turbo. There's the wastegate actuator for the turbo, it looks like. You got your steering rack buried in right underneath all that. This here is a sway bar. Got another big cradle for your front suspension. Got a, on the front, we got a very nice looking cast aluminum lower control arm and then struts on the top. Sort of familiar looking, kind of looks like S197 Mustang with that lower control arm and strut set up. Little cast iron knuckle, single piston front brakes. I was kind of surprised by that. The fuel tank, sort of a unique design. It's mostly over on this side, but it does go up and wraps around the drive shaft and takes up some space over here as well. It's kind of tough to see, but it's, it's tucked up in there. There, you can sort of see the corner of it there. So a couple different styles of exhaust hanger. They do that, these are different durometer, just depending on what they're trying to quiet down and keep from moving. Back here on the rear, you got a rear sway bar as well. Got a lot of stampings for all the suspension parts. That's one of the ways they're saving money on this thing, passing that along with you guys, because you know this thing starts at just $20,000. So just use stampings instead of castings. I right, check this thing out. One giant flat stamp piece of steel going into a cast iron knuckle. Yeah, this whole knuckle assembly here is one cast iron piece. And that's what picks up all your suspension pickup points off this rear cast iron knuckle. Kind of unique. At least uh, I haven't seen a lot of Fords like that. I know BMW did a suspension like that way back in the day, except uh, 
this whole piece here would have been cast on cast iron as well so Ford decided to lighten that up a little bit and just used a steel stamping instead of a big formed cast iron piece here's your fuel fuel coming into the tank I'm guessing somewhere over here maybe just judging by these lines the evap module for evaporative emissions there's not really a whole lot to look at under here because they put these sound deadening panels on both sides, heat shielding all over the place, protecting that steel drive shaft from the exhaust. The exhaust looks like very nice quality stainless. Just a regular steel drive shaft, uncoated. It'd be nice to have some paint on that. Can't really make it out. I don't think on camera here, but up there is the EGR cooler on the back side of the engine. Speaking of coolers, we've got a little cooling duct scoop to scoop air in and go up to the front transmission differential unit. You can see you've got an oil drain plug for that. Speaking of oil drain, when it comes time to drain the oil, because there's the oil pan is right there for the engine, you've got to take off like 15 bolts and take this gigantic cover here off it would be nice if they would just put a little flap in here for you but alas it does not exist so this whole section has to come down do an oil change i don't really see any other way to do it but that's pretty much it there's not a whole lot we can see because there's so much cladding underneath does have active grill shutters that's covering up the intercooler right now. But you can see they added all this stuff to just improve aero, help get the best mileage possible because that's one of the huge selling features, especially on the base model hybrid. Not only is it starting at 20 grand, but gets really good mileage. This one, of course, all wheel drive, two liter EcoBoost, probably not gonna be as good, but we're still looking forward to getting it out on the road and seeing how it does do from there so let's go for a drive all right guys we've come to the towing portion of the test got our maverick hooked up here with my little utility trailer let's haul random things around on and i have my 2002 ford think electric pickup truck i've had for quite a while i picked this thing up many years ago and just use it to run around the neighborhood and whatnot ignore the ugly steering wheel cover that was done by the previous owner actually i haven't really done anything to this thing other than just hook it up and charge it runs on six group 31 batteries and i'm sure it's probably about a thousand pounds i have it on this trailer which we're going to say is a thousand pounds it brings us to our 2000 pound tow rating on this particular maverick when it comes to the towing on mavericks there's two different flavors. You can get it at 2,000 pounds of towing capacity or 4,000 pounds of towing capacity. The only way to get to 4,000 pounds set up is if you get two liter EcoBoost, all wheel drive, plus the max tow package, which this one does not have. What's the difference between the max tow package and the standard one, especially if you don't know, like this one is the all wheel drive and a two liter EcoBoost. Max tow package gives you a bigger radiator, a little bit more cooling for the transmission. And most importantly, if you're looking at one of these things and want to know, it has a seven pin uh, wiring harness plug for your trailer. This one only has the four pin plug. So that means it is the regular 2000 pound tow rating. So uh, we're just gonna go take this thing for a little drive and see how it does with the uh, Ford Think on the little steel utility trailer. And just go up on the road here, US 22 in uh, Myrtle Beach. This uh, incline is probably the steepest thing we have in Horry County, South Carolina to actually test anything on. So that'll give us a good uh, idea of how it does. Okay, we're back in the truck, ready to go for a little cruise. First thing I wanna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into tow mode. There we go, tow haul. Just to give it its best shot, doing the best we can. I do like this uh, 7.3 Super Duty with his huge lance sliding camper that just pulled in here that truck will probably be running for basically ever let's just go for a little 
little run around the block. So first thing I will say is you definitely can feel this trailer is back here. It's not unsettling or anything like that, but it's noticeable. You know, a lot of times you'll hear guys say, you know, you can't even feel the trailers behind you. In this thing, you can feel that the trailers behind you, which is to be expected. It's fairly light duty truck. That's why we have kind of a light load on it. Honestly, with this trailer, the uh, thing that I found that is most affects any vehicle I tow uh, that I, I tow this trailer with is that uh, the lift gate on the back or the tailgate, however you want to say it. I'm going the wrong way. I want to take you guys up to 22 on ramp. Is that uh, tailgate on the back of it? It uh, it catches a lot of wind, causes a lot of drag. The uh, the Ford Think though on the back should help deflect some of that. It's a little bit more aerodynamic looking. But headed up here, you can definitely feel in the uh, in the rear end on this thing that it's it's making those uh, shocks and springs work. Even though, like I said, this is not that heavy of a load. Power-wise, it's not having any issues, but it's definitely not fast by any means. But if I lay into it, we're wide open now, trying to accelerate. We're up to 60 going up this on-ramp, which is not bad. That's acceptable. Like I said, this thing is not going to light anybody's world on fire. It's just a good, capable little truck having no problems here one thing i can say is you're definitely not going to be able to see anything out the back and the side mirrors i've played with the adjustments on this thing and i've not been able to get them exactly where i want them to be this trailer is quite a bit wider than the truck and i forgot this bridge yeah this really tests the suspension here if you see this thing porpoising up and down i don't know who they got to build this bridge but man it, uh, the expansion joints, it just hits on some suspensions. It hits a harmonic that can just cause them to bounce up and down. Um, my Super Duty F-350 was really bad for that with certain trailers. Other trailers, it was not a problem. For whatever reason, have a Class A RV, it's as smooth as glass down that thing. Of course, it is an air suspension diesel pusher. But cruising along here, we're at 55 miles an hour and it's running at 2,400 RPMs. I'm not sure what gear it's holding, but it's holding us probably, it's, you know, it's an eight speed, maybe like in sixth. It may be holding us in fifth. Doesn't tell me here on the, the uh, readout. I can see if I can pull up the settings. Select screen. Trailer light trick. Nope. I'm not seeing any good option for pulling up like a tow setting screen. There may be one. I'm not sure. Brakes are fine with this light load. It's not a problem. Handling. It's handling it fine. No big complaints there. I mean, this thing would be fine if you just want to tow, you know, one, two jet skis. I guess with the way jet skis weigh now, my I have an old two-stroke jet ski that breaks grit as hard every time I fire it up but uh, it's fairly lightweight it's only like 600 pounds newer ones are like 1200 pounds so you're probably only going to tow one of those unless you get the max tow package this is not bad though now granted if you have something more than two or three thousand pounds to tow this is probably not the vehicle for you anyways you probably need to at least look going to a half ton you know f-150 or something like that but for just small light load if you need to haul something like this golf cart it's a big golf cart but it's a golf cart or a uh, you know load of mulch or something like that this thing is definitely capable of doing it so at 60 miles an hour, we're at like 2,600 RPMs. So tow haul mode is definitely holding lower gears than uh, the regular, just normal drive mode. I think I might actually, uh, there it goes. It just dropped down to 2,000 RPMs at 63 miles an hour. 
gonna go ahead and take this off the ramp and turn us around here. You see the trailer bounce up and down a little bit. It didn't really upset the truck when I hit that uh, hole there though, so that's good. The suspension is pretty smooth on this thing, so even though you can you can feel it loading up that rear suspension quite a bit more with the tongue weight from this you know small utility trailer and the little load that we have on it, but it's nothing unnerving. So, like I said, if you have small loads to haul, I see no reason in the world why this truck wouldn't work for you. Definitely takes some getting used to with uh, the brakes though. Cause they, uh, you can tell that there's some weight behind it on these brakes. Cause of course it's a four pin connection. We don't have a brake controller or anything or brakes on this trailer for that matter. It's always uh, nice to have trailer brakes. But that's pretty much it guys. I mean, what more can you say? It's a light utility trailer. It's a low, low weight load. It's only a couple you know, probably 2,000 pounds or so. Can't expect it to be uh, too dramatic. And it does just fine. I have no complaints at all, not with this. Like I said, you're gonna definitely feel it moving around a little bit, uh, that load, just because, I won't say you feel it moving around. You can just tell that it's back there. And uh, it's trying to do grade braking there as I'm coming to a stop. But two liter EcoBoost, you're not going to get that much hold back like you would with a larger engine like a 7.3 Godzilla. But this thing does okay for a small load like this. If you're approaching 4,000 pounds, I would have to think about it a little bit before I would get super comfortable towing with this, at least on the regular. But for just the occasional run around town, yeah, you'll be fine. This is perfectly acceptable and uh, look forward to playing with this thing just a little bit more all right getting here on the on-ramp I want to play with it a little bit and just switch it back into just its regular normal mode and just see how that does okay you can definitely tell because it shifts sort of early it dropped us down to like 1700 rpms on that shift at now we're 50 miles an hour 2000 all right it's dropped us back down to 1600 rpms you can tell it's a little lazy on the bottom end there but that's to come to be expected you've got a small engine small turbo which does help with the torque you're talking 277 pound feet of torque but you're very very far out of the peak torque band and it kicks down fairly quickly but yeah, if you're gonna to tow with this thing, I highly recommend going ahead and putting it in tow mode, which I'm going into right now. And that just downshifted, brought the RPMs up to about 2,300 at 55 miles an hour. That's really where this thing's gonna to need to be, so you can wring out as much torque as you can out of the two liter EcoBoost. And uh, even though the grade braking is not super impressive, every little bit helps. So anything you can do to reduce your use of your service brakes it's probably a good idea come back up around here like I said I just want to make a quick little run around the block uh, just to give you an impression of what this is like as a light duty tow vehicle and now we're back on our favorite bridge here on 22 testing out the suspension on the trailer and the Ford Think and the truck. Man, this bridge sucks. But the big thing I want to see is when we drop off the other side here, just how much grade braking we do actually get. Like I said, it, it's not tremendously powerful, but let's just see what it'll do. pop over the crest here, touch the brakes, it dropped us a gear, we're about 2600 RPMs now, let's tap the brakes again, see, there we go, tap the brakes again, dropped another gear down to about, we're up to about 3400 RPMs, and it's holding us at 40 miles an hour going down this uh, off ramp, so that's not bad at all. Yeah, so for your light duty towing needs, this thing will get the job done, guys.
Well guys, I think we should finish up the review on this 2022 Maverick with three things that are great and three things that are not so great. And because we wanna leave on a positive note, let's hit the not so great ones first. This one right off the top, I noticed as soon as I got in it, tried to pair my phone to it. That worked great, sync works fine on it, but it does not have Apple CarPlay or Android, which I wouldn't care about that because I have an Apple phone. It does not have Apple CarPlay. And I don't know if that's just not available at all on the Maverick or it's just not in this package but honestly this is a Lariat with the Lariat Ultimate package on it if it doesn't have Apple CarPlay that's just ridiculous I mean we're just talking about pretty much software here Ford should have that on this thing uh, also I've uh, touched on earlier in the video the seats are not terribly comfortable at least for me like I said these things are there's kind of flat on the bottom. I like a lot more bolstering than this, which, you know, I know not everybody does, and that's a personal preference thing, but for me, I didn't find these seats all that comfortable. Uh, maybe on other models, they are a little bit better. Maybe in the cloth versions, they're better. I don't know, but these particular ones, I wasn't crazy about. And finally, I had a lot of blind spots on this, I noticed, especially towing. But even just driving around, I could never get my mirrors adjusted to give me a really good view all the way around the truck. And that leads into a complaint I have with a lot of Fords and just new vehicles in general. This of course has the Bliss system in it. You can see right there, blind spot indicator, to let you know that there's a car in your blind spot. That's fine. I would rather just have a spotter mirror on those side view mirrors. That's uh, me coming from Super Duty days and stuff like that. I'd just rather have good old analog vision and be able to look and see what's back there. Give me a spotter mirror instead of uh, electronic little LED. That's my only uh, real complaints. You know, there's a few others, but those are the two or three big ones. On the pro side, big, big pro side, the price. 35 grand you're getting a lot of vehicle for 35 grand uh you've got a usable i mean an actually usable little truck bed you can haul some decent loads in here it can tow a little bit you know you're looking 2,000 pounds on this particular model so it's going to be like a jet ski or a small john boat something like that but enough for a you know a little utility trailer and some runs to home depot or lowe's so for that money you're getting a lot a lot of content they need to add Apple CarPlay, but other than that, you're getting a lot of truck for your money, uh, especially new car prices the way they are these days. That's not bad at all. And then the entry price of 20 grand to get one of these, that's the one I would really be interested in is the hybrid. I hope uh, I get a chance to spend some time in that and see what kind of mileage I can eke out of one of those. But I, had, I would have a tough time not getting the all-wheel drive version. I just, I like having that, you can see or hair playing around in a little bit of loose sand. It has no problem with that. It has really good little tires on it too, these uh, Falcon Wild Peak ATs. These are decent little tires on this. Thing did well in uh, snow and ice storm we drove it through last week. Next up, it I like the utilitarianness of it. The easy to clean interior, the uh, bed lining, AC outlet in the bed, 400 watts of power. And then the ability to upfit it. This one, of course, has the rails in it. You can put all kinds of stuff in this thing. It has a Ford Accessories uh, bed cover on it, which is decent. But you can do a lot of stuff with this thing, and it's easy to clean and take care of. So that's definitely a plus. And finally, one thing I also touched on earlier is the amount of front passenger leg room, especially for the driver. I like that cutout here on the console to give uh, me more room for my knees and things like that. So that's uh, very nice. A lot of decent amount of room in a very small package. But I think that's pretty much where we're gonna leave it off. I have enjoyed my time with this. I like this little thing a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, I'm probably not the customer Ford had in mind for this. I think they're aiming a bit younger and uh, maybe more of an urban dweller i live far enough out in the sticks and have enough land my target demographic would probably be looking for like a 1987 f-350 dump truck 
to take care of all the crap that I have to take care of. But if you just got some small lawn projects, need a decent commuter that gets good mileage, can do some light duty off-roading, all at a decent price and gets pretty good mileage, maybe the Mavericks for you. It's uh, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. So if you think you're in the market, definitely check it out. And uh, I have to say, if you're going to get one, I get one specked out like this. I do really like the Area 51 paint with the black roof and black wheels, black mirrors. It all looks really good. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, head over to svtperformance.com for all the latest news, reviews, and information on your favorite Ford-powered vehicles. And while you're over there, sign up for a premium membership. It helps us keep the site up and running and bringing videos and stuff like this content all the racing content we bring exclusives interviews you name it helps support that well, we really appreciate it guys thanks for checking out the video Captain Archie's.